What's up guys? Brett here. We're back playing some more Battle Brothers on the Beast and Expiration DLC. Picking up a little while after the where we left off last time. Um, I told you guys I would do some stuff off camera and I certainly did. Um, you'll notice I'm way off to the west of the map. I'm trying to get in here before nighttime. Oh god, that was close. That was super close. So, over in, I think, Tarsdorf, someone told me about a rare piece of armor that may or may not be here. I don't think it's here. Um, they kind of gave me the exact lo the name of the uh, the place where it would be, and I don't think this is it. Uh, but it's the first place I ran across, and I didn't want to pass up an opportunity uh, to take a fight. So, fortunately, it's more undead fighting. Um, check this out. <laughs> if you're very astute, you'll notice that Janald is now holding an Impaler. And that's because I was able to take a fight against a pretty huge group of goblins. And I smashed them. So, it was fun. You guys didn't miss out on much. It was an observer, or overseer rather, and a shaman. And just, you know, about like 26 or so other goblins. So, I mean, it was a pretty big fight. Pretty sizable fight over near uh, Grafenhaven. And uh, we took that down, and I wasn't able to kill the shaman before he escaped. He was the last unit that escaped, uh, so I didn't get another one of those cudgels for our witch hunter fight, which is kind of like one of the things I wanted going in. Um, but I did get the overseer's crossbow, so I was able to give, um, is that, what's his name? Oz. Oz the, uh, the foot, well, he was the footless. He's had a lot of nicknames. <laughs> He's had a lot of nicknames over the course of this playthrough. Uh, but I think Oz, we took his unique crossbow, uh, but I gave it back to him, and I gave Janald the Impaler. So we're back up to snuff with his gear. And we also, off camera, I took a, another like really huge uh, fight like this. Very similar, except there were like six or seven of the, the fallen heroes. It was a pretty brutal fight, and I was honestly a little shocked that I made it out without losing anyone. And since there are guys on the battlefield, we're going to stay high and tight. Just pass with all of our frontliners. So while I was talking, I was kind of misplaying a little bit, but that's alright. <clears throat> also, I forgot, I think we have a level on Guido that I should have I put in. I think it's the level where he gets um, Battle Forge. That would have been nice to have before this fight, uh, but I don't think we're going to need it. You know, we might want to advance, or this is going to take forever. The undead have a hard time advancing in the swamps, as does pretty much everything. Yeah, let's, uh, let's jump up. They'll never be able to reach us if we don't. Strategically, there is no reason to move up here. Uh, but for the sake of all of our souls, we should we should save some time. Yeah, it's already hard to move in the swamps, but for the undead who already can't move that well, it's even worse. Which means that the geist won't ever move up. There's always going to be some fallen heroes hanging back to guard the Necromancer, so it's just a bad situation. I'd love to get Sir Steinhardt here on some of this solid ground. That's probably not going to happen. This is not a scary enough opponent for us to really be you know, too concerned with making sure that we're standing on solid ground. As long as they're also in the swamp, I'm content. We may just want to switch to the banner now. We'll hold back with the movement as long as... Wow, that was lucky. That was extra lucky. <laughs> so, Janald really needs fatigue at the moment. Uh, just from wearing the really heavy armor that he's used to wearing. Yeah, we should move down here. Man, the odds of us hitting a Geist while we're standing in the swamp are so low. There we go, we'll just pass here. I 
That's something I've been guilty of in a lot of my past battles. Just because once you get to a certain point, you don't really need to fear this type of army composition. You still need to take it seriously, but not necessarily fear it. And what I mean to say is, I've been guilty of not, you know, respecting the Geist fear. And I should have always been pulling out my banner like a turn sooner than I normally do. So getting the banner out this turn should prevent any type of routing. It's such a huge bonus. And getting actual bodies on the Geiss is solid. Jumping in here could be scary. They could all just turn and like nuke Guido. Let's hope that's not the case though. And he has the runes. Oh, I can't believe we missed that. Yeah, had a game, had a, uh, a fight off camera where I basically played whack-a-mole with Lance. Or just a ridiculous amount. Surrounded by like five undead. And he just, one after the other, he just had to keep beating them down over and over and over again. Alright, bone plating helping us there. Took that first shot from the spear. But now that Sir Dankard is in that ridiculous set of armor, I mean, he's pretty safe. Can we still move up? Nope. Can we kill a ghost? We'll take the 41. And it was a 41 there because we had a three-person surround, so our chances were increasing a little bit. But yeah, if we, had we not moved forward, we would still be sitting back here, and they probably would still not even be attacking us yet. And this would indeed be a very long battle with me trying to fill empty space talking. I'll be telling you guys what I had for lunch. What I did with my kids yesterday. Just trying try whatever I could do to fill empty space. But I will tell you what I had for lunch though. I did have breakfast for lunch. Some of my favorite things to do. Made myself an egg and cheese omelette with some grits and some cinnamon toast. Very good. Not very uh, healthy. I like to use butter. And good European stuff. I'm a butter snob. But at least I know that about myself. Lance took quite a few hits here. Our armor has never really gotten a chance to fully repair from the last few battles I've been in. Nice. So all the guys are gone. That's like step number one. Would love to get to the Necromancer. It just, it never happens. It's so hard to do. Pretty happy to get that kill there. And then we'll switch to our pole arm and start making use of that hopefully soon. Big shots from downtown. Once again, we can't move. Alright, so we're whittling them down, but the most dangerous things on the field are still here, the fallen heroes. Gotta be careful about surrounding one like that. Uh, that weapon is made to swing in an arc. Very good. Had to keep him on the solid ground there to make sure that he wouldn't get too tired. The zombie wall comes right back. I love that weapon. I'm glad we were able to put it back in circulation. 
such a satisfying high damage mace. It's it's incredible. I don't know how much better it could be like on its rolls and stuff as far as damage and fatigue. But it's hard to imagine it being any better. Yeah, that's what I was talking about there. Uh, before we stepped up, there was only one unit. Nice. So getting that berserk. So but before we stepped up, there was only one unit. And he also had a zombie next to him. So that kind of disincentivizes the AI uh, from basically hitting its own people. And if you're aware of that, you can kind of take advantage of it. But once I stepped up, it was basically just him and us, which means it's a perfect opportunity for the AI to use that round swing, which is often pretty difficult to find a home for. And right now there are no more guys, so we just need to switch back and get a shot. Let's just go for the Necromancer. If we hit him, fine. But I'd love to kill the Necromancer. Stop him from raising dead and possessing and doing all that stuff. Dang, I was hoping for another big smash. Like I said, as long as we're both fighting in the swamp, it's an even fight. Good hit from our uh, new unique weapon there. Oh man, we gotta we gotta take care of this guy. That way we can. I may have been able to split. I don't think I was though. I want to take care of this guy. That way I could reload and shoot my crossbow, but that's not gonna happen. I was prioritizing him, hoping to get that kill, and we did. I don't know how much longer until the Necromancer starts to run. Pretty often they're already running at this point. Next turn, our archer should be in range of the Necromancer. We can start taking kind of greedy shots. Man, do we just need to switch back again? We have quick hands, it's not a big deal. That would have been nice to get that kill though. Alright, he can't do anything. Pass completely. The fallen hero did not come back. Now we switch again, reload, shoot. For those of you who weren't there for the Kraken fight, I recommend if you want to see what it's like to really trudge it out in the swamp, go check that fight out. It was an incredible fight, but man, talk about terrain coming into play. I gotta say, I'm shocked the Necromancer isn't running. So, like I said, I don't think this is the place with the the fat loot, but I'm kind of hoping now that they give me something anyway, because this is a pretty time-consuming fight. It's almost 15 minutes now. Also, I was in a fight earlier... Uh, off camera where a dude almost broke my living shield which needless to say I would have been pretty unhappy about and we're getting some decapitations you'll see all the zombie heads uh, that basically just means they'll never come back yes okay I was willing to take that chance because I'm so I'm so tired of being so far back. 
Alright, Steezy, do your thing. We haven't gotten lucky yet. Someone in the comments of an old video was remarking on how bad my RNG seemed to be sometimes. And I just kind of made the comment. And it's like, yeah, you know, sometimes my RNG is bad. Um, but because it is random, sometimes it's just completely in my favor, too. So I try to appreciate that when it happens. And I'd get salty about when it doesn't. Okay. We're closing in. I wonder if the AI is not moving him because it knows how hard it is to move in the swamp. Because at the end of the day, we have dogs still. Wow, he's almost down. Yeah, I guess maybe the AI figures there's just no way he's going to run away. So it's just like not even trying. Alright, now that he's dead... I was thinking about stepping forward, but like I realized if I just kill him, uh, someone like Ragnar might actually have an open shot, and we get him. Alright, now we just gotta beat this thing. So we can go home. So Raymond leveled, and like I said, Guido was leveled before. Okay, so two gemstones, some pretty expensive, you know, gear, signet ring. That's not the worst. I'm kind of way out in the middle of nowhere, though. Um, so... I think I was actually at Brookstat, and it said somewhere to the west. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, this is a new event. So Guido the Falcon runs into your tent and says something is watching the camp. You come outside to see a silhouette in the distance, skulking behind brush and tree limbs. You know it's staring when it hisses. For what else would it be looking at to elicit such a charge? Its arms are long and slender and end in claws. You take a torch and sling it toward the beast. Its slick skin winks a vibrant orange, and it shrieks away from the cloud of embers and sparks as the torch lands and rolls past. The toothy maw is the last thing you see fading back into the darkness. I think it's an alp, sir. It's all by itself as far as we can tell. You ask if the cell sword has had visions. He shrugs. Yeah, some. But I've also been drinking, so there's that. Interesting. I've never seen this one before. I don't know what it does. But as usual, so check this out, guys. This is something I noticed, too, uh, in an event or two that happened off-camera. So a while back, Yaku was converted to becoming a flagellant. But for the longest time, he was our monk character. And monks have really poor stats, uh, except for Resolve. But they have so many positive interactions um, when it comes to all of these different types of events. So in terms of him, you know, not being a monk anymore, when it comes to these events, he still is. Now, I don't know if that's a bug, but it's asking us what Yaku thinks. And that's because he's a monk. It has nothing to do with his thing as a flagellant. So let's go ahead and see what, is it, what does Yaku think about this. Oh, wow. Yaku World Bleeder the Flagellant is at the rim of the camp, whipping himself raw. His soul-cleansing tool is rigid with broken glass. Or maybe this does have something to do with him being a flagellant. But I want to tell you guys, for sure, 100%, he had um, an event that was a monk-only event. I don't remember what it was. I think he gave me, like, one more holy water, which is something that only the monks can do. And it really shocked me because he is a flagellant now. So this seems like it is taking into account the fact that he is a flagellant. That's very interesting. His soul cleansing tool is rigged in broken glass and cat claws, bound tight with leather, rinsed taut in urine, and tassels of twisted horsehair. He walks out into the wilderness, hiding himself with every step. It's not that I fear you, creature in the shadows. It's not that I fear you, shadows in my mind. It's not that I fear you, mind in my body. The man stops walking, but the urgency of his flagellation increases, and you can see the flecks of blood winkling in the moonlight. Winkling is not a word. Winking. 
It is that I fear the old gods of which you are not, of which you are but an insect. The Alp silhouette shrinks away, shrieks, and then scurries off altogether. The man returns and collapses into the camp. A few of the men are horrified, while others are emboldened by his courage and righteousness. So he hurts himself, but he gets plus two hit points. And that's what I'm saying. That was like, since he's converted, that's like maybe the fifth event that's involved him. This is Yaku right here. That has given him some sort of like buff, like permanent buff. One to melee skill. I think that's the second one to hit points. Some to resolve. Like, it's been kind of nuts. So before we do anything else, before I forget, this is a must. We've got to get Battle Forged. And we need to come into here and see what we can pick up. So pretty weak HP roll. Great melee skill roll. We have to take that. Uh, great resolve roll. And I think we should just take a three here and be happy. Very tempted to get some better melee defense. Um, but those are all, those were great rolls for him. Filling a lot of his gaps. And Raymond here. Ooh, what do we want on you, Raymond? We can grab... And then dodge. To help out his dodge, we should probably just grab initiative. So there we go. Happy to see Raymond getting leveled. So he was already in reserve. So before we even go anywhere else, let me tell you that before I started recording, um, we had an event where we came across a group of children in the woods protecting a caravan of, like, you know, expensive goods. And a merchant that was dead and a bunch of soldiers who had been, like, stoned to death. And we go up to the kids, and the kids are like, you know, get out of here. And we're like, nah, we're going to take all that loot. And I had an option, right? Do I try and take the loot, or do I leave the kids alone? And I was like, you know what, I'm going to take the loot, and just to see what happens. And the kids beat us with rocks. And you'll see all these different injuries. And a lot of them have even gone away. I had to rotate a lot of my uh, front line out, like Sir Chris here is in reserve. And that's because he got beaten by a bunch of kids, and it was like, man, those kids really gave it to us, is what they ended up saying, um, but, yeah, it was pretty cool, so guys, now you know, monks, if you haven't been watching this, uh, this playthrough since the beginning, or if you've missed a lot of episodes, monks, guys, at least have one in your party, we've picked up new brothers, we've gotten, like, amazing outcomes, ooh, what's this, deserted towers, I don't think this is it either, yeah, but basically the innkeep told us that there was an amazing piece of armor and somewhere to the west. And, yeah, I don't know. If it's not here, I don't know if we'll find it. But we should definitely fill up our inventory. Another one of these fights? We should definitely fill up our inventory. And I'm not, I'm not actually worried about this, guys. I know this can be a little boring. Um, these fights are never certain, but they also shouldn't be that hard. Falcon it up. Man, still another Necromancer. So this is a extremely similar fight, but even more Fallen Heroes. Um, but I would say the advantage favors us on open ground. So believe me when I say I did a lot of grinding off camera, but I don't want to miss out on too much stuff. Even that, that cool event with the little kids stoning us. I mean, that was a fun event. I wish I'd have got that on camera. Should have passed there. There's no reason not to. And because there are guys on the battlefield, we'll stay, we'll stay tight. Kill them and then start advancing. Very similar plan that we had last time. I would love to send out Sir Steinhardt. And I may want to. This high ground is super tempting. Let's do that. And that gives him Lone Wolf. He's just far off, far off enough. Um, getting Lone Wolf is essentially giving him the same resolve bonuses. Uh, that's something like uh, having a banner raised would give him. Good hit. Happy to see some of their resources being diverted to protecting a necromancer who's not actually in danger. Don't know any reason to let them 
get to us. Force the Necromancer to use his powers to to resurrect instead of to buff. We don't have a target yet here, but we will, I'm sure, in a second. Some scary weapons on this side of the battlefield. Two of these maces. I see a military cleaver. Sweet. And then we get the reset. That was a lot of damage. We're not going to push up. I think we can spear wall there. And we may want to pull our banner out this turn, but there's only four of these dudes. Let's pass here. We may get a chance to swing twice instead of move once and then swing once. Got to be smart about how we do that. I mean, just getting kills raises our morale, these little blue flags. And it makes it harder for the geist to check our morale. So that spear wall already coming in handy a little bit. Dude, that didn't do much. Come on, spear wall, hit the body. keep that up. There are a lot of enemies on this side. I was hoping someone would step up to Sir Steinhardt. Nice. Keep him on the outside. There we go. And give us that nice little lightning trail. That should be a kill. And we have a surround here. That felt good. We're just saving just a little bit of fatigue on some of our boys. This is interesting. We're hoping the lightning curves off and hits that way. Dang. Could have been some really easy geist kills for us. Nice. That was worth stepping out. His flanks are pretty much protected. This tree here really helps. And then he's got spear wall on the other side. Go ahead and get out our pole arm. We'll be more effective with that. Big slam there, and let's use Indomitable just in case. Another spear wall up. Yeah. Dangerous weapons. And for sure, some of our armor hasn't recovered from that last fight.
Okay, here come the screams. Uh, let me get Baldwin. Dang it. Just needed it to turn that way. So once again, getting punished for not using my uh, my banner. But I had a pretty reasonable... You know what, let's just rally. Okay, we brought back some people. I had a reasonable expectation of... Uh, being able to kill at least one or two of the guys before that really happened. And this is why we didn't move. I was kind of anticipating him doing that. So, this guy should be guaranteed dead. We got another triple swing. Beautiful. And let's get in on this dude while we can. Can we get this one? Okay, good. We didn't even have to rely on uh, the, the lightning. So some of our brothers are currently running, but there's no real threat around them. I think that's just Guido now. He should be back. We want to get Steinhardt about right here. We want to make sure he's he's touching the Necromancer, and we'll tie him down. Yeah, because he's going to start running once we start getting these kills. We don't want to engage here, for obvious reasons. We'll get double teamed. To no real benefit for us. Alright, that sucked. <laughs> we missed and we only had one shot. Is that Wolfgang? No, that's Raymond. Yeah, a Geist on a hill is a pretty annoying target to try and hit. Axes against our shields is no no fun. I think this is like our sturdiest shield in terms of its like raw durability. Huh. That's a lot of guys coming back. I think we need to leave Steinhardt down here to deal with this, or to help deal with this nonsense. We really needed that hit to land. Nice. Can we beat a Geist over the head with a mace? We can. It's physiologically possible. Battle Brothers has taught me that. Alright, that's one of them down. That's the scary business right there. Let's leave Steezy and Guido to deal with that. He's a resurrected fallen hero. He has no armor. So every turn we're getting one turn, we're getting one step closer, so better accuracy. All right, touche. <laughs> I was going to be able to leapfrog over this guy soon, I hoped. Uh, but he moved down. Perfect. Mm. 
Nice. That puts Steezy in a good position to finish him. Hoping to get lucky. As long as we tie down the Necromancer, everything else should fall into place. And with him routing, no more buffs for them, and no more resurrections. Yeah, that's why we put two guys on him. The AI makes surprisingly good use of the shield bash. Nice, just put him right back in the ground. Good job, Guido. So we had a name suggestion for um, for our polearm bro. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Janeled. And I liked it a lot. I was hoping to see if someone else maybe had a suggestion. But I'm not against uh, the idea. Which was basically a lot of really cool like Witcher references that kind of make good names. And if you know me at all, if you've been listening to my, some of my other videos, I talk about Gwent um, as a game pretty often. Kind of fell in love with it playing Witcher 3. Um, and it took a long time really developing you know, a standalone Gwent game. I was able to get into it like early access and I enjoyed the heck out of it. Um, but I really wanted like a story element. And they finally came through with Thronebreaker. Which if you love the Witcher world, which is a really fleshed out, it got a beautiful dark place um, as far as fantasy goes. Lots of even like humor elements too. I mean, it's just the complete package. And having that world in an like RPG setting, but completely revolving around card games, I'm all about that. And I had a blast with Thronebreaker. It's something that eventually when I start streaming, I'm going to want to do and hopefully people watch. Because there are a lot of different ways to play it. A lot of different like unique characters you can pick up or not pick up. Or they'll join you for a while and then they'll leave depending on your choices. That whole like RPG element comes into play. And the way I play RPGs, I'm like OCD. I gotta collect things. I wanna have like every dialogue option. I like to always kind of try and do the right thing. I'm kind of a white knight player. I know that. Um, but also, I like to make sure that I get all like the dialogue options. So if you like really thorough playthroughs, then I'm kind of your guy for that. I know when I watch stuff on YouTube and I see people who like don't read, that bothers the heck out of me. So another just a very lucrative run here. I didn't quite see. Did we get any levels? We did. We got a level on Janel. That's cool. So we're going to pick up his Polar Mastery here. And let's check out his stats. A 3 in, you know, melee skill is, is fine. Something like this. So someone did a good job of reminding me in the comment section that uh, kind of unique to Witch Hunters is this ability here. If you look at the bottom... Uh, where it says plus 20 resolve at morale checks against fear, panic, or mind control effects. So this is what makes Witch Hunters excellent at taking down Alps, uh, Hexen, you know, Geist, those types of, of units. And an ancient priest, I believe, as well. Uh, but I went in and I looked and I was like, you know what, have I forgotten about any other um, type of effect? And, you know, I look here... Lance is a pacified flagellant. That's very interesting, unique background. Uh, used to be a flagellant, kind of became a monk, and the opposite way that Yaku did. You know, cell sword. You you kind of look for these keywords at the bottom, and there are none. So witch hunters are kind of unique in that way. I'm sure there might be one or two others that have that. They don't like stand out right now. They don't you know scream at me, uh, but 
That's a pretty huge buff. Plus 20 resolve at those checks. Vacated dwellings. Is this it? Guys, if we find another large group of undead, I'm just going to have to say sorry. Like, I, I, tr <laughs> I tried. But at least we're culling the world of the undead scourge, which is what I'll tell myself. Um, is there anyone we want to bring in for Sir Chris? I mean, he's level 18. We want to get him into this fight. Probably bring out Steezy, perhaps. Something like that. Okay. And let's get into it before it's night time. Please don't be large undead. Let me fight some raiders or something. There we go. Ugh. Guido takes a nasty shot. Uh, but he does have Battle Forge now. It's just that his armor is already in pieces. So I see a long axe. We gotta get rid of that. We don't play with long axes. I like to keep every shield that I have. Thank you very much. Wow, what misses, man? Who was that? Was that Raymond? Raymond, how you gonna do that, man? So we need to get a new helmet on uh, Janald. He's losing out one range. Let's take this kill. He's losing out on one range because of that helmet. It has minus two vision, and that's no good. Let's tie this dude down. And because he's using a long sword, we will also pop uh, Indomitable. Nope. We could step forward and bash this guy. That'll work. <laughs> that was good. Let's step forward here, kind of protect uh, Guido a little bit. We'll move this way to protect our other two brothers. We may be leaving some kind of weird line of sight that they can get to, uh, but, I mean, it's not much. We'll stay here with the rest. Perfect. Yeah, that's what we were expecting. And solid kind of use of their archers from the AI to, to kind of jump around and move. There are definitely some enemies. Was that a throwing spear against my... I don't like it when they do that. One of our recent battles, they actually broke my uh, Kraken shield. A damn throwing spear. But I was going to say, hey, in some battles, you can jump your archers around and really spread them out. We never really did that this playthrough. Uh, it's kind of not in my playstyle, uh, but I know it's something that you can do. Especially if your archers are all, you know, very lightly armored. Like, my archers are heavily armored. They stand and, you know, if I need them to, they can double as, you know, front liners if I have to. Um, but at the end of the day, they're, they're not all that vulnerable. But if you play the game in such a way that archers are always fragile, but they also have really high fatigue and they, you know, really high movement, um, stuff like Pathfinder, even like uh, footwork. I mean, you can make it so that your archers. Can we do? Yes, we did it. Okay. Now we have everyone tied down. Um, but you can make it so that you could just run archers all over the battlefield, just like you do, uh, just like the, the goblins kind of do. That's kind of my thought. Step forward, step forward. The high ground gives you one increased range. Nice. They did shield bash me to get me away from that archer. We're going to run him down. And that should be it. Perfect. 
Hopefully this is the spot with the sweet loot and it's not. Oh, man. Oh, well. What can you do? I took out three places that were to the west. And none of them were it. And let's make sure we're repairing some of these extremely valuable weapons. And crossing our fingers that when we get into town, we'll be able to make a pretty big profit. Military cleaver for sure, arming swords for sure. And then these decayed helmets are all great. So this isn't a bad helmet for a crossbowman. That's 140. Uh, this is 150. So this is the best one, the best generic helmet that we can get on him. This one wouldn't be bad though. I'm, I'm not going to settle for the generic ones though. I mean, look at all the goodies we have to sell. We even have some amber too now. Yeah, let's head up to Windfest. Pretty sure we have good good trade there. They're open with us at least. And let's make a pretty big profit. We're out of tools also. We need to buy all the tools we can get. And luckily the tools are at great prices. So let's check out our old shield method. And 19. So that's awesome. That's really good sell prices. Make sure we don't sell anything precious. Going kind of slow. Let's hold on to that fighting spear. I think I needed to hold on to a quiver. I saw someone only had one for some reason. So there we go. We sell off the big stuff. Get rid of the amber. How are we on different types of food? We're doing great. We need the cheap stuff though. And let's just buy all the tools. We can buy some ammo too. Okay. Let's leave there. We'll check out the weaponsmith. Um, the important thing for us to do now is to uh, get to the training hall. And get some of that for our new brothers. That's a pretty sweet set of armor for us to pick up. And it's also, I think the prices here are fine. And uh, they're a little, they're pretty medium. Light scale armor. I mean, heavy lamlar is 285. And it's too heavier than Dakota Scales. Dakota Scales is a really solid armor pickup. It's 38. Do we have anybody who like could really use that? I mean, it's it's a significant upgrade to the Cell Swords armor, of which we're still using two. Do we have any frontliners that are using crappy armor? Aside from Steezy, who really can't handle being in heavy armor. Guido has Battle Forge now. I'm tempted to do it just because I'm rich. <laughs> Basically. Very tempting. Also, they have this here. The padded flat top helmet. So we could grab that. Minus one vision. And I think we should. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. But I'm going to grab a coat of scales. We don't have one yet. I'm getting a little getting a little greedy. Let's grab the coat of scales and get him what would look really sweet. Let's give this to Steezy. For the love of God, this is the most thematic thing. I didn't even think about this. This dude is superstitious. He has a fear of beasts and he's paranoid. He needs these runes. Oh my God. Why didn't we have him wearing this the whole time? He's like bugging out of his skin. 
and we could have given him the runes the whole time. Now his resolve is really high, but if he's ever fighting these types of enemies, uh, this makes it so that we actually can bring him into the Witch's Hut fight. Oddly enough. So what do we put in our new coat? We can put the bone platings, which is just always good. Additional fur padding. This is damage ignoring armor. That's solid. And then we could also... Any range damage to the body by 20%. This will probably look the coolest. Let's go with the additional fur padding. I think that's the most important. And then I believe it was Raymond who's missing out on... A quiver. Anyone else? That really needs that, that extra quiver. Uh, Edgel. Yeah, we'll hold on to the next one we see for Edgel. Okay, I think that's good. Stop into the tavern. Some fancy merchant. The Exiles hideaway. Nah. Unless they tell us there's something amazing there, we don't care. Okay, so here we go. We're going to spend some crowns here on veterans lessons for everyone. And let's head out. So we're going to go this way. The place we need to fight is right here, the deserted farmstead. Why on earth the game thinks it's a good idea to send me from Grafenhaven all the way up here for only like, for less than 3,000 crowns? I have no, no clue. But hopefully this will be the last fight we take today. Looks like there's some orcs here. Defeat the Greenskin Invasion. We're winning currently, I guess. I have killed quite a few Greenskins on the road. I don't know if that contributes or not. But if this is a good fight, let's get there before nightfall, please. So, orc young, orc warriors. Nothing we haven't beaten before. This guy is dead as hell. No armor, no shield. Good shot from our boy. Let's just keep everybody close. Check out that new uh, new hotness right here. That's cool. I love the fur padding. Kind of sucks you can't see the scales. Between his beard and the padding, you can't see anything. We should just be passing. Nobody's going to reach anyone this turn. Could force them to move in the snow. And meanwhile, we'll stay fresh. We have some uh, light snow ground here. Could be relevant. Light snow builds less fatigue. Let me get as many kills as we can before this battle starts. Put the fear of God into the orc warriors. Not quite a kill there. Yeah, I like the idea of stepping up and getting that split. We can tie him down. There's only seven of them. Our back line is secure. Lance can beat two orc warriors by himself. Is his armor somewhat repaired? I'm not sure. That might be worth knowing. He might struggle a bit if his armor is still beating up. Yeah, he's missing 120 armor.
But at the end of the day, Sir Steinhardt is where the DPS rolls in. That tree is kind of giving them a nice defensive position. We're going to use Indomitable here and not move. Let the warriors come to us. They won't be able to do anything. And we'll Indomitable there as well. Alright, this is where we break them. Yep. Well, kind of a wasted Indomitable last turn, I guess. But this is basically to prevent them from charging. There we go. So now we're tying down both of these with Sir Dankrid. We'll step up here and we'll attack the one that we have two dudes on. And we don't hate that at all. Now we can step up and get that quadruple surround. Big swing there from Baldwin with that, that great sword. That'll work. Step here and take this shot. Yeah, kind of surprised the tree didn't get us there. Yeah, let's try and get... Should have shot this one. Well, Indomitable, because now that there's an archer in play there, I think the AI really favors trying to get to them. So we'll keep them from doing that by using Indomitable on both of these. And you know what, we don't really need to now. What we can do is use our armor break here. Uh, we hit him in the head, that's not what we wanted. Yep, there we go. Because we didn't Indomitable, <laughs> we got punished. I called it and it happened. Alright, Polearm comes out. We are a Polearm Master now, so we can, I think we can hit guys standing right next to us with the pole arm without penalty. Should check that out. And now he's running. That's great. Which means that we no longer have to worry about his uh, zone of control. But we'll take the free kill anyway. We get Berserk. And Wolfgang also has Killing Frenzy. So he actually gets increased damage. So that was, that was a good play in a lot of ways. It's hard to remember exactly who has what when it comes to like one-off individual skills. But Wolfgang having Killing Frenzy is pretty cool. I like that on Archers for sure. Killing Frenzy added to Berserk just kind of makes sense. Good hits. Perfect. Complete surround. And then Lance, once again, adds another kill to his ever-growing tally. We clean house. And now we have to go all the way back down. Would make more sense if we could just go to Horn Guard. It would be a really cool mechanic, uh, like time-saving wise, if the game made it so that if you took a quest from one of the houses, 
you could turn it in at any single, um, you know, uh, place belonging to that house. It would kind of be hard in terms of like writing because a lot of the, you know, the ends of the contracts are kind of written. It's like a little story, but it would definitely make it a lot easier on the player. Sell off the junk. Is that all? Make sure we're not eating strange meat. Buy all the tools we can get. And once again, we have another place where we can check the armor. Oh no, they're... They have marauding green skins. That's unfortunate. So we're not even going to get the opportunity to pick up something cool here. Full of treasure, southeast. Remote gravestones. Okay. And we can always check to see if there are any amazing hires. There's a raider here. The Menace. Goswin the Menace. I don't know if we want anybody on our team called the Menace. I'd much rather add uh, new and unique backgrounds. But anyway, let's see if we can head down to Grafenhaven. I would not be surprised if we ran across... I said it was southeast. I think this is it right here. They said it was full of treasure. Uh, we don't really have time today, but maybe I'll do this off camera and I'll let you guys know if I pick up anything good. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. I hope you enjoyed... A bit of the grind fest, but I mean, we're getting, at the end of the day, we're getting great experience on our brothers. Um, actually, we leveled Baldwin as well. I didn't even, I didn't even notice that. Um, I think we want to get Indomitable on him and Berserk as well. Let's get Indomitable first. I'm a big fan of getting the defensive uh, perks before the offensive ones. I gotta say, I like this. This is pitiful. I'd love to put more points there. And I would even like to put some points down here. Um, but he needs fatigue badly. And his resolve is almost in a great place. Um, his HP is almost in a great place. But his fatigue is pretty poor. Uh, mostly thanks to the fact that he's wearing some extremely heavy armor. But he's also using an extremely light sword. So that kind of makes up for it. If you look at this thing, it's minus 16 fatigue. Compared to this being minus 6. And I would say this is probably even a stronger weapon. It kind of is. Almost like pure stat wise. But uh. Anyway guys. Alright I'm out. Thanks for watching. And I will see you later.